Hi, today we will discuss the differences between amide and ester loclanastics. First of all, let us see what are the groups in the loclanastics. Loclanastics are having both the lipophilic group as well as the hydrophilic group. This lipophilic and hydrophilic groups are going to be connected by one of the linking group and this linking group can have a small bridge in between the hydrophilic group. So in this way, a loclanastic will have a lipophilic group, linking group, bridge and hydrophilic group. And the linking group may be either ester functionality or it may be made of uh, amide functionality. So based on this, uh, loclanastics can be classified into ester loclanastics as well as amide loclanastics. So if we see the types of loclanastics, let us take one example here. This is the prokine. Now prokine is having an ester linkage, so it belongs to the ester loclanastics. Similarly, another example is the lidocaine. Lidocaine is having amide functionality. So loclanastics can be classified as ester or amide loclanastics based on the linking group. So now let us see what are the different examples for the ester and amide loclanastics. Ester loclanastics include cocaine. Cocaine is one of the natural loclanastic obtained from the coca alkaloids and cocaine because of high euphoria and drug addiction it is nowadays not preferred as a loclanastic but some of the drugs which are related to the cocaine are useful as the loclanastics so that's why most of the loclanastics are having the suffix cane cane indicate they are the local anastics so other drugs in the ester loclanastics include benzocaine and tetracaine and procaine Similarly, amide loclanastics mainly involve the lidocaine, bupivacaine, mipivacaine, prilocaine, and ropivacaine. And here we have to observe that there is no difference in their suffix, whether ester or amide loclanastics, both are ending with the cane. So we cannot uh, identify whether the loclanastic is an ester or amide based on its uh, suffix. But we can observe a lot of differences between the ester and amide loclanastics both in the pharmaco kinetic parameters as well as the pharmaco dynamic parameters. Now in this video, we will see what are the different types of differences between the ester and amide loclanastics. So what are the differences? So first one is the acid dissociation constant that is a pK value. Second one is the onset of action and third one is the chemical stability and fourth one is the hypersensitivity and fifth one is the drug interactions and sixth one is the tissue toxicity. So let us start with the first one acid dissociation constant pKa. So ester loclanastics are having an acid dissociation constant of around 8.5 to the 9.0. So their pKa value is varying from 8.5 to the 9.0. For example the tetracaine is having a pK value of 8.5. Similarly, chlorprocaine is having a pK value around 9.0. On the other hand, amide loclanastics are having a pK values around 7.6 to 8.1. Again, here mepivacaine is one example having the less pK value around 7.6. And uh, ropivacaine is another example having 8.1. That is the maximum pK among the amide loclanastics. Now what is the effect of this pK value? We know that the physiological pH is around 7.4. Now we can see that which type of loclanastic is having a pK value nearer to the physiological pH. We can easily observe that Mi loclanastics having 7.6 to 8.1 that means they are having some nearer pK value to the physiological pH. On the other hand ester loclanastics are having more pK value and they are far from the physiological pH. Now what is the effect of this uh, pK value and how it is going to be related with the pH? The relation between the pH and pK is given by Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Now we can apply the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation and we can see what is the influence of this pK value on the activity of these loclanastics. Now loclanastics are having the amine group so they are acting like the weak bases. For a weak base the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can be written as pH is equal to pKa plus log of base by salt. So here we can take the two cases. When our pH is nearer to the pKa value, then what happens? When pH is somewhat nearer to the pKa value, the concentration of the base will be 
approximately equal to concentration of the salt. That means the drug will have approximately 50% ionization. So 50% as a base and 50% as a salt. Otherwise 50% unionized and 50% ionized. And if you take the other case where pH is less than pKa, then what happens? When the pH is less than pKa, the concentration of the base will be less than the concentration of the salt. In other words, the drug will mainly exist as a salt form that means it is having more ionization. So when the pH is less than pKa, the drug mainly exists as an ionized form. Now ester local sticks having the pKa value around 8.5 to 9.0. And if you compare with the physiological pH, which is around 7.4, in case of ester local anesthetics, the physiological pH is less than their pKa values. So when the pH is less than pKa, the drugs will be more ionized. So that's why ester local anesthetics are mainly present as the ionized form, thereby they're having less lipophilicity. Now what is the case of MI local anesthetics? MI local anesthetics are having the pKa values around 7.6 to 8.1. Their pH is nearer to the pKa value so that they are having approximately 50% ionization. Since they are having 50% ionization that means they exist both as a salt form as well as the base form. Otherwise they are present as ionized as well as unionized form. They are somewhat more lipophilic compared with the ester local anesthetics. So this is the first difference between the ester and MI local anesthetics. Ester local anesthetics are having the more pKa value so they are less lipophilic. Whereas MI local anesthetics are having the less pK value, therefore they are more lipophilic. Second point of difference is the onset of action. So local anesthetics are going to produce the anesthesia by blocking the neuronal transmission locally. In order to block the neuronal transmission, they are going to block the voltage gated sodium channels. But before they are going into the nerve and blocking these so voltage gated sodium channels, they have to cross the membrane. So the onset of action of local anesthetics depends on the drug transport across the membrane. Since local anesthetics are weak bases, they can be represented by the symbol B. And now this local anesthetics can exist in the physiological system as unionized form as well as the ionized form. So ionized form is nothing but the BH+. Which type of uh, moiety can cross this membrane? You know that cell membrane is highly lipophilic. Only lipophilic mediators can only cross this uh, cell membrane. Now unionized form of the local anesthetic which is indicated by the B can easily cross this lipophilic membrane. On the other hand the ionized form cannot cross this uh, lipophilic membrane. So whether the local anesthetic is ionized or unionized depends on the its pK value. So if a local anesthetic is more unionized then it can easily cross the membrane and it will have the fast onset of action. Now let us see which type of local anesthetics are having the fast onset of action. We have seen that ester local anesthetics are having the different pK values coming from the 8.5 to the 9.0. So for example here tetrakine is having 8.5 and cocaine is having 8.7, prokine is having 8.9 and chlorprokine is having 9.0. In this way they are having the variable pK values from 8.5 to the 9.0. On the other hand MI local anesthetics are having a pK values around 7.6 to 8.1. For example mepivacaine is around 7.6. Lidocaine at 7.9 as well as prelocaine is again at the 7.9 and rupivacaine is 8.1 as well as uh, bupivacaine is again at 8.1. So now we have arranged these local anesthetics uh, from the increasing order of their pK value. And already we have discussed that as the pK value is greater than the pH, the drug mainly exists as an ionized form. So it is less lipophilic. So it cannot easily cross the cell membrane. Now based on that, Mepivacaine which is having the least pK value which is nearer to the physiological pH will have less ionization so it is more lipophilic and it can easily cross the cell membrane. So Mepivacaine will have fast onset of action. So within the list the drugs which are listed above will have fast onset of action and the, as we are going down they will have slow onset of action. And again, we can see that MI local anesthetics, because having the less pK value, they will have the fast onset of action compared with the ester local anesthetics. Third point of difference is the chemical stability. So again, let us take one example. This is the prokine. Already we have seen this example. This prokine is having the ester functionality. And this ester can be 
hydrolyzed by the plasma esterases because it's having an ester functionality it can be easily cleaved by esterases which are present within the plasma so within the plasma this drug can be hydrolyzed so once it is going to be cleaved it is inactive and it cannot produce any local anesthesia so that's why ester local anesthetics are less stable because of the hydrolysis by plasma esterases on the other hand mi local anesthetics let us take one example of lidocaine Lidocaine cannot be cleaved by plasma esterases, but it is going to be metabolized by the liver cytochrome P450 system. So it is more stable compared with the ester local anesthetics. So chemical stability is less for the ester local anesthetics and it is more for the MI local anesthetics. And even ester local anesthetics are not stable in presence of heat. So when they are going to be stored in the ampules, they should not be exposed to the high temperatures because they undergo the hydrolysis and they become inactive. Similarly, the ester local anesthetics are not stable even in the sunlight, so they should not be exposed directly to the sunlight. So chemical stability of uh, local anesthetics somewhat, is somewhat less even in the solution form which is stored in the ampules as well as in the physiologically they are fastly metabolized compared with the MI local anesthetics. And fourth point of difference is the hypersensitivity. Again, let us take the same example, Prokine. You can see that ester group is going to be cleaved. And when this ester functionality is going to be cleaved, it gives the two important metabolites. One is the para-amino benzoic acid, that is the PABA. And another one is the, here in the case of Prokine, it is the dithyl amino ethanol. So most of the ester local anesthetics are PABA analogs. So when they are going to be hydrolyzed, they will give one of the important metabolite, PABA. This PABA, is uh, having a phenyl group which is attached with the amino group. This ilno group can act as an immunogenic uh, group which stimulates the immunity to produce some allergic reactions. So prokine can give a metabolite of PABA which stimulates the immunity thereby produce the hypersensitive reactions. Now we can compare this uh, prokine with another drug like the sulfonamides. Procaine produces the hypersensitivity as well as sulfonamides also produce the hypersensitivity. Why both of these drugs are going to produce the hypersensitivity? You can see that both are structurally somewhat related to the PABA. Procaine is having the inilno group which is a PABA analog and sulfonamides again having the para amino phenyl group which is attached with the sulfonyl moiety. That means whenever this para amino phenyl group is attached with an acidic moiety like the carboxylic acid as well as the sulfonic acid, then they can stimulate the immunity and they produce the hypersensitive reactions. So prokine as well as the sulfonamides can produce the allergic reactions because of the immunogenic uh, component in the structure. So within the ester local anesthetics, we can observe the other drugs like the benzocaine. So benzocaine is again having the same immunogenic group. Similarly, tetracaine. Tetracaine is also having the same immunogenic group. So all these uh, ester local anesthetics can produce uh, allergic reactions. On the other hand, MI local anesthetics are not having such type of groups which can produce the hypersensitive reactions. So hypersensitive reactions are more observed with the ester local anesthetics which are acting like PABA analogs and when they are going to be cleared, they release the PABA which can produce the hypersensitive reactions. And fifth one is the drug interactions. Again, if we take the ester local anesthetics, most of the ester local anesthetics are acting like the PABA analogs. So when they are going to be hydrolyzed, they can release the PABA within the blood. And what is the role of the PABA in our physiological system? PABA is going to be converted into folic acid by one of the enzyme, dihydroterate synthetase enzyme. This enzyme is going to be blocked by some of the antibacterials like the sulfonamides. So sulfonamides are going to competitively inhibit the PABA so that PABA is not going to be converted into folic acid. So this is a competitive inhibition. That means whenever PABA levels are going to be increased, the action of sulfonamides are going to be decreased because both sulfonamides as well as PABA are going to compete for the same enzyme, dihydroterate synthetase enzyme. So now, in presence of ester local anesthetics which are going to be cleaved into the PABA, the PABA levels are going to be increased so that when the PABA levels increases, sulfonamide action is going to be decreased. So this is one of an interaction with the ester local anesthetics and sulfonamides. So in presence of ester local anesthetics, the activity of sulfonamides is going to be reduced. 
and such type of drug interaction is not observed with the amyl alkaline sticks because amyl alkaline sticks are not producing any PABA metabolite they are not producing any such drug interaction with the sulfonamides and sixth point of difference is the tissue toxicity so ester alkaline sticks are having less systemic toxicity whereas the amyl alkaline sticks are having more systemic toxicity till now we have seen so many differences between the ester and amyl alkaline sticks in all the points ester alkaline sticks are having some disadvantages compared with the amyl alkaline sticks but at this point ester alkaline sticks are going to win the game and they are having less systemic toxicity compared with the amyl alkaline sticks again this may be because of the lipophilicity since ester alkaline sticks are less lipophilic they cannot cross the blood brain barrier very easily whereas amyl alkaline sticks are more lipophilic so it, they can easily cross the blood brain barrier and they can enter into the cns so what are the toxic symptoms produced by amyl alkaline sticks are related to the cns side effects so these amyl alkaline sticks can produce tinnitus and dizziness and blurred vision restlessness agitation and convulsions in the patients whenever these alkaline sticks are given at a high dose they can precipitate the convulsions in the patients such type of toxic side effects are not observed with the ester alkaline sticks in this way ester and amyl alkaline sticks are going to differ in many aspects if we summarize the difference between the ester alkaline sticks and amyl alkaline sticks ester alkaline sticks are having the more pk values whereas amyl alkaline sticks are having the less pk values so ester alkaline sticks are having the pk value farer from the physiological ph whereas amyl alkaline sticks are having the pk value which is nearer to the physiological ph and because of this ester alkaline sticks are having the less lipophilicity whereas amyl alkaline sticks are having the more lipophilicity this lipophilicity also influences their onset of action ester alkaline sticks are having slow onset of action whereas amyls will have fast onset of action similarly ester alkaline sticks are less stable because they can be easily hydrolyzed by the plasma choline ester ages whereas amyl alkaline sticks are more stable because they are not undergoing the hydrolysis by the plasma ester ages and next one is about the allergic reactions ester alkaline sticks are more allergic whereas amyl alkaline sticks are less allergic the allergic reaction shown by the ester alkaline sticks can be attributed to their uh, metabolite paba next one is the drug interaction with the sulfonamides and ester alkaline sticks can release the paba after the hydrolysis which can inhibit the activity of the sulfonamides on the other hand amyl alkaline sticks cannot show such drug interaction with the sulfonamides because they are not the paba analogs and finally about the toxicity ester alkaline sticks are having less toxicity because they are having the less lipophilicity so they cannot easily cross the blood brain barrier on the other hand amyl alkaline sticks are having the more toxicity because they are more lipophilic and they can easily cross the blood brain barrier 